Welcome to the podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, Building and Protecting Your Business One Podcast at a Time, a Kazor's Family Production. In this episode, we discuss Facebook privacy, Snapchat as a communication tool, and John's crazy college work life. We are back with a March Madness episode today, and with the theme of three-pointers in college basketball, we're going to stick to three topics for this freestyle episode. We will take on conversation topics that we have been having this past week. We bring these conversations to you as we believe they can help any business owner or entrepreneur. John joins me live from Western Carolina University, and with the rush to get John to class, let's get right into this episode. First off, I want to talk about Facebook. Obviously, pretty much everyone's heard about it you know, read about it or listened to something in general about the news with Facebook. Um, so just give us a rundown on kind of what what your perspective on this news is and a little more deeper detail about it and what our audience can do to, you know, to prevent this and kind of everything in general. Yeah, so the Facebook news, and I don't want to go into the story as to like all that went down. Basically, it's almost like third-party apps have information uh, about your Facebook account and it got leaked, right? So if you want to dive into how that happened and what happened, I mean, there's tons of news stories out there with that information. The bottom line is Facebook and social media and marketing in general took a big hit this past week because of this. Um, you're giving so much information to Facebook and you're hoping that you tr- or you're trusting Facebook to do, do well by you. And as it turns out, that didn't happen. Now, I, I definitely think that People are jumping the gun a little bit on this and maybe freaking out perhaps a little bit too much as, you know what, but I think they probably, that, that's part of it, right? Um, any little bit of leak leaked information is cause for concern. But this goes back, John, to some earlier stuff and conversations we've had and articles we've written and talked about on the podcast is it's really time to control your news feed. Um, I've been spending a lot of time controlling my own newsfeed and the different networks and social media channels that I'm in. Um, so the thing that I want to hop into real fast is just Facebook in general and what you can do to kind of put, uh, the trust back on your side. So you don't have to really worry about what Facebook's putting out there and Mm -hmm. just real quick. I mean, most people get on Facebook, you'd probably agree, right, John, that they're getting on it on their phone, on the phone app. Okay. So if you go to your Facebook phone app and you open it up in the bottom right hand corner of those three lines, click those three lines, it's going to take you to your kind of back end settings with Facebook, right? And once you do that, um, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go scroll down to the bottom sometimes and go to settings and privacy. Once you're in there, now you're in the now you're in like the back room of your Facebook account. And there's a few different things going on here. And if you click on, for example, and I'm doing this right now, if you click on your account settings, you can go to your privacy tab. And that first tab is going to really give you an overarching view of what's going on on your Facebook account. I would review this. And I wouldn't just review it one time and be done with it. When Facebook kicks out new updates, sometimes those settings can change or new settings are created that could disrupt old settings. So never think like once you've done it once, you're done with it. And that's a little bit concerning, but that just is what it is. This is so where you can go into your Facebook settings and kind of control overall what's going on with your Facebook account. However, what I've done is I've gone in and I've actually gone back through old posts, old pictures, old comments, and controlled the feed as to where that information goes out. I've actually prevented a lot of that content from actually even being public information. I like seeing it from time to time. I like getting reminders about that content, like a picture of let's say my kids or whatever. But what I've done is I've marked it so only I can see some of those posts because mm-hmm. you know as time goes on, do people really need to go back that far in time on your history and your life? So I think that's something that you can do. But um, if you click on your, uh, let's, let's go back a little bit. If you go to your location, right? Your location is is Facebook's monitoring your location as long as you've as as long as you are not con- in control of that. So that's certainly one thing that you can do, and you can click on location where Facebook never monitors your location. I'd probably recommend this for most people, unless it's important, right? Unless it's important for you to let others know where you are. And I can see in certain situations that you might want that. It becomes easier uh, if you're checking into certain places and you want your friends to know where you are. I get it. But again, anytime you're giving that information up, someone's got monitoring 
going on about you. Um, yeah. I would also go, the thing that really we were talking about before with Facebook is the app. So if you go to that settings page, scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's three boxes, apps, ads, support index. Click on apps. This is where you're gonna find out where, uh, what apps have access to your information. And what I would do here is you can click on, um, where are we going, logged in with Facebook, and you can start seeing where, uh, what information, what apps are actually having this information about you. And you can kind of start scrolling through it, what information that they can see, like what can your friends see, John? Like you can go to my Facebook page and you can see what apps I'm interacted with. So again, there's very, there's a lot of details that you can get into with all of this. A lot of these apps that you go to have like a one box or two box check and it's very simple and you can control your privacy much easier. You can see your third party apps like right there, like Instagram kind of does that. Facebook is very complicated. This is... This is more like um, the Office 365 environment where there's just a lot of stuff going on in the back end of your system that don't fool yourself in thinking that you have it all figured out because even people like us who are in it a lot of times on the business side, this stuff changes constantly. It's a different look on your, I, uh, on your iPhone or on your phone than it is, say, on your computer. It's, you're getting to the same end result, but it's a very different look. So I guess the, the overall thing is you get comfortable with this, uh, reach out to someone who has a no. We're happy to chat with anybody that's got questions on what is going on behind the scenes with their Facebook account. What can people see? And not only what can your friends and families and acquaintances see, but what can marketers see? And the last one I'll have you check is the ad section, which is in that same privacy and the settings thing. What you can see here is what ads you've engaged with in the past, what categories you're interested in, information about you. So if you've clicked over there and you go to your information, this is relationship status, employer, job title, education, other topics you're interested in, categories you're interested in. And what happens is marketers like us can then go and advertise to you based on the information that you're putting out there. And I'm gonna talk on the other side of it because I've blocked this for myself, yet we advertise on <laughs> Facebook for a lot of different clients. So I'm going the opposite direction here because I feel like more often than not, people are trying to game the Facebook system or game the social media aspect of advertising. And I think that unless you really want to uh, let others know about your interests and everything else, that you should prevent some of that information from being seen. Because at the end of the day, if it's a good quality business and they're putting out good quality content, there's going to be a way that you guys are going to be able to communicate about something where if you prevent some of that information, you're being more protective of your security. And I think that's something right. important to do. It's a little bit opposite of what we do in business because we are marketing to people, but we don't want to market to someone. We don't want to game into their world. We'd rather do it in a genuine way. So again, I'm not saying how to do your privacy settings on Facebook. I'm just letting you know that this exists that if there is a leak, you can prevent a lot of that information from being leaked by not sharing so much information about your Facebook. Again, that's a lot of information, kind of going on a rant because I'll say this, it is a little bit all over the place and you kind of need to go on a rant when it comes to Facebook. Yeah, no, I agree. And then, so another, another topic in the part of Facebook could be controlling your own personal feed. As far as every, everything you mentioned was very important. So with the ads and controlling your privacy and you're controlling like all of your settings. But as far as what you want to see, you get a lot of complaints typically about like, you know, Hey, I don't want to see this topic or that topic, but it just keeps popping up on my feed. What can I do about that? Yeah. So when you're in your, if you're talking about the actual news feed, so you can then go and figure out when you're on your main page and then you go over to your, like your about section and you start seeing the different movies you've liked, the different uh, Facebook pages you like, you can now go unlike all of those pages. It's hard to do just in your main news feed, but if you actually go into your like the about section, I believe is yeah. what it is. I'll have to double check. If you go into your about section, you can unlike a lot of the stuff. And I do this all the time. You'll be amazed as to how many pages that you've liked. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of those pages are important. And those are the pages you're spending time with. Those are the groups you're spending time in. You like getting updates from your favorite sports team, right, John? You're a New York Mets yeah, fan. You're not going to unlike the Mets. Or maybe if they no. start off bad, you might be like, I'm sick of these guys. <laughs> but you can uncheck those boxes 
And I think that's important to just every once in a while, give it a run through. It doesn't take a long time. You can do it without even leaving the page. If you're on your computer, you can uh, hold your mouse over it. I think on your iPhone app, you just, there's a little down button, you click it and just hit unlike it, uh, unfollow it. There's just, that's the way to control your newsfeed. Another thing that I would do is Facebook has this thing about, you know, you can actually follow first, see first. So if, you, if there's something that's positive in your world, there's something you like seeing in your world on a consistent basis, I would recommend that you click the C first and that'll show up in your newsfeed. Because if not, Facebook, someone else is deciding what you see first. And let's say that's a negative thing, as soon as, or if let's say it's something that someone who's bragging about something, maybe that's going to put you in that negative mindset that Facebook is getting blamed for quite a bit. But if you, again, control your actual news feed, then I think um, you're going to have a better experience with Facebook. So the hashtag delete Facebook is real. It's on Twitter. It's on Instagram. It's even on Facebook, which is crazy. And I, I'm not saying not to delete Facebook. If you are troubled by it and you don't like it, then yeah, go ahead and you can delete Facebook or you can suspend your account. Deleting it actually doesn't delete it right away because they are they have the hopes that I believe it's 90 days that that data is still going to exist out there. So just because you deleted your Facebook account today doesn't mean that data is gone today. And who knows if that data is ever really gone, but you can suspend it, which it won't be searchable. You won't find it. You will still be in their messenger. Um, their messenger app because it's kind of like a separate app so just know that your messenger app did not go away you'd have to cancel that as well or i believe if facebook is important to you at least at some level it is for us we don't use it as much personally we use it more for uh, on the business side of things and reading and research and kind of like just having a news feed if you will Um, that if you control it, if you control your settings, if you control your privacy, if you control what it is that you like and dislike, that you'll have a better experience overall with Facebook. So the next topic we want to get into is Snapchat. Um, Last week, we really got into Snapchat hard. We've been dabbling with Snapchat, as you guys may know, you know, with Chaz and with Sportsypreneur Snapchat. But Snapchat is a good way to, to spark creativity, really. I mean, so... In our, our CAS snap, we've been just trying to find new ways to get energy in the office to help, you know, help build that company culture, right? And then just spark new ideas and then to find a new way, a new and easy way to communicate with each other. Um, so go a little deeper into that and kind of what we got, what we have going on. Yeah. So when I talk to you, John, or I ask someone in the millennial generation, someone who's in college, like... It will answer this question now. Like, what's the number one app, social media app you use with your friends, and what do other kids use in college? Yeah, so Snapchat's huge. So, any pretty much typically any weekend, if I open my Snapchat and I go into my uh, my friends list or anything like that, the stories page is always full. Yeah. So everyone's in Snapchat. Everyone's you see what everyone's doing. Everyone loves you know the millennial generation and the college kids love showing everyone what they've got going on and just communicating people with pictures, which is pretty amazing because you typically talk to people and they're like, Oh, I hate pictures. Yet this picture app is pretty much number one, arguably with Instagram. Yeah. But it's, they're different. They're different. So it's ar- arguably the number one communication app I'll say. Yep. So it's a, it's a very good way to, to stay in touch with your friends, get again, get creative with the filters or with videos or, with any of those, there's little type of those little cartoon guys who do the cool, you know, they're just doing cool stuff. Um, but yeah, so it's it's huge with the younger generation that, and we all love it. It's huge. Yeah. Well, you're you're uh, you're in it, right? So if you're in the app yep. and you came across a business that was also in the app, which was kind of unexpected, you didn't think they would yep. be possibly in Snapchat. That is interesting to you. So as we build our business, and John, as you've seen this. Our, our growth from, you had seen 2015 to 16, and then 16 to 17, and 17 where we are now is rapid growth, right? Which yes. means yes. we need to scale up, which means we need people who know how to use social media, who have new ideas, or who are fast on a computer, right? That could be anybody, right? It doesn't have to be yep. someone who was just in college or someone in their 20s. But what we've realized is a lot of those people tend to be, and is, is we're looking to hire or create relationships or work with business owners of all ages, if we're involved genuinely in an app that they're communicating with it, communicating in already, 
then I believe that is a good thing to then talk to them about, right? And it's a good thing for they might be interested to say, well, that's interesting. You're using Snapchat to internally communicate with one another. And it seems a little bit odd, but I can create a 10 second video right about something that you can see that sparks an idea shane in our company our coo he uh it was when was the day it was last week and we're recording this it was last uh tuesday or wednesday it was national down syndrome day and we have a client rods racing for orphans with down syndrome and he said we've got to make sure that we're talking about national down syndrome day he put a quick video out there it led to many different conversations and discussions and it led to us sharing stuff not only on Snapchat, but on Instagram, on Twitter, and Facebook with other people about this incredible day and talking about our client, Brady Murray, and his foundation and his cause, Rods, right? So it was just something. He left while he was in his car, I believe, talked for 10 seconds, and it sparked this idea. So it it is, like you said, John, it is creativity. And so I know yep. a lot of people we talk to say, well, I'm not very creative or I can't do this. And I get it. It's hard, especially when you're in your work and, and you're so focused on Excel spreadsheets or tasks or meetings. It's like, how am I going to get creative in the day? I believe creativity sparks creativity. So how do you do that? You have to get yourself in a creative environment. And I believe Snapchat yep. is a creative environment. Like I was at I was at a soccer game this weekend and I was just I was totally messing around because I'm freezing cold. I'm trying to keep my mind away from how cold I was, which is nuts in Charlotte in uh, late March. And there was some emote or some uh, um, what do you ever call it? It was my guy, my Bitmoji, the Bitmoji was doing yeah. some crazy thing. And there's someone behind me, and we were to start laughing about it. Like it's creative, right? And if you're not in that on a daily basis, it's hard to maintain creativity. So culture wise, internally. I believe if more people are doing these things and coming up and creating interesting pictures and creating interesting designs and drawing on their on their iPhone screen, that that will lead to more creativity. It'll give them ideas on something for someone who would otherwise say that they're not that creative. They're now sparking creativity. So I'm as you know, run this company. I'm trying to look for ways to how can other people other people be creative in that world. And right. I believe Snapchat offers that potential while at the same time giving a very easy way to communicate back and forth and then also a way where we know the attention of a lot of people are in Snapchat and so now we can have conversations with them in their world because you know another quick story is we were in a meeting a meeting this week and the the individual we were talking to was like well I have a hard time communicating with some people because I like to talk to them in this environment and our question to them was, yes, you like to talk to them that way, but they are in some other setting. You don't know what that setting is. That setting could be email. That setting could be a networking event. That setting could be a country club. That setting could be Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. You have to find out where they are, not where you are, and you have to go into their world, not your world. If you don't want yep. to do that, that's fine. Just understand that you're not going to have their attention. So if it's my job, my idea to go out and interact with people in college or coming out of college or recently graduated from college to become social media managers, let's say, for our company in the next two or three years, maybe not tomorrow, then why wouldn't I be in Snapchat? If you are looking to hire someone out of college, then you should 100% your business should have a profile in Snapchat. You know, if you're doing a career fair and you show up at the career fair, that's great. But while people are walking around at that career fair, they're all opening up their Snapchat uh, app. So why would you not be on Snapchat if you're trying to recruit college kids? Why would you not have, right, the geotag or the geo filter at the bottom of your Snapchat uh, around the two hours that you're at the event. So when people swipe across, it says the name of your company there. It blows my mind that we're not thinking that far ahead for these businesses. And these businesses are stuck in these times thinking, well, I'm on LinkedIn. Well, yeah, college kids are going towards LinkedIn, but go to where they are. And I think that's the that's the attention that we're trying to get after, but doing it in a genuine way. Again, going back to what we talked about on Facebook, whatever we're doing in social media, you have to be genuine about it. People are on Snapchat. You know who they are. That's when you go and spend time with it. And at the same time, if nothing else, you're having fun with it. It's creative. And it's, yeah, people complain about certain aspects of it. It's not that hard. Once you spend a little bit of time with it, it really isn't that complicated. So that's my Snapchat uh, story for the day. John, so do you agree? Because I'm here talking about how, how I think Snapchat is. But you're, again, you're in college. You're coming out. Like, you're going to be working with us full time. You're already kind of doing that. We're going to get into that story here in a minute. 
But have you been to career fairs recently, like where what I'm saying, or am I just you know talking crazy? No, yeah. So we we actually had a career fair on campus last week. I was looking through Snapchat because we talk about this all the time, right? Like we did, or we were talking about it with one of our clients, Brady Murray. You need to be on Snapchat, or college kids are looking at geo filters and they're looking at anything you know that they can put on their face, right? <laughs> like any, just like I was talking about creativity, right? So they're looking at all that stuff. And I was looking at it and not a single business there. There were a ton of businesses there. I filled the gym and not a single business had anything on Snapchat, anything on Instagram um, with where as far as geo filters or anything like that. So, you know, the, as I mentioned before, the college kids are all on Snapchat. So why not go to them? And then the second part of that that I want to talk about was doc- documenting. So as we mentioned, we have this uh, this CAS snap. And last week, um, Eric had Eric and Rudy, I guess, walked to lunch. And Eric took a picture of it, right? They were standing outside of the stoplight. And I was I was sitting in um I was sitting in class and I was like, wow, <laughs> I haven't done anything like active all day. So this goes with CASFIT, right? I'll talk about it more later. But staying productive and staying active. So that picture that Rudy or that Eric sent into our um our CAS snap um group chat, it got me wanting to say, hey, I'm gonna walk to lunch. So what I do after class, I walked farther to subway to grab some lunch and then all the way back to my car so i i mean i was like it helped spark productivity for me because staying active at least in my perspective staying active will help me with my work will help me with my school will help me with just mentally right with with my mental health like staying active Absolutely. helps with all those types of things and it all started with a snapchat from in, our internal communications with eric and rudy and it's just a, it's just another way it's not saying you know you have to take a Snapchat of everything you're doing. But if you're thinking, hey, maybe this will help one of our employees who's three hours away, let me put it in there. And it'll help the whole company be productive, which at the end of the day will help the CEO, help the guy who's in business development, right? So it'll help our yeah. clients in the end of the day. Well, yeah. it, it made someone laugh, perhaps. I laughed when I did exactly. it. Exactly. Shane was near me. He laughed. But what you just did, John, is kind of cool because you didn't tell me that before. That was the first time you told me that. No. That's nothing yeah. crazy that just happened. But I think what that leads to is it's hard. In social media, Snapchat, doesn't matter where it is. You put something out there. You put out content. You're not always given feedback as, wow, you just made me walk longer to lunch today. You just gave me an idea. You just sparked this. You sparked that. Once in a while, you do that. And we would encourage people that if you do get that kind of uh, something out of it, that you should let that person know because it means a lot. But that's a yeah. thing like... People are going for the numbers. They're saying, how many people watched my video? How many people liked my post? How many people shared my post? And it's like, it doesn't matter because all it takes is that one person to make that one little difference at that moment. And th- yep. those little differences add up to a point where, you know, John just like, wow, I love working for this company or I love doing this or these guys are great. Or if you're trying to get someone as a client, like it's that little by little by little and it just compounds itself into something later on. So I think that, John, what you told me, that's really cool that that led to that. Again, it's nothing extraordinary, but it's this little piece of thing. It's this little something that led to something more as a direct result of the documentation of what we were just happy to walk across the street in the middle of March, freezing, <laughs> freezing. So, John, you were hitting on this a little while ago. We've talked about it a bit uh, on this podcast. You've written about these stories. You're in college, right? We're not pretending yep. that you're not in college. You're in college full time. <laughs> you're working full time. You are graduating soon. As we record this, it's March, right? April's around the corner. Uh, we talked offline about how fast time goes. Just, just you wait, John. Like time just does not stop. It's just crazy. <laughs> My son said it to me. He's like, I can't believe it's Friday already. I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> it's just crazy. <laughs> so here you are. You're doing all these things. You're working hard. You're talking to clients. Like you're disrupting the way so many people look at college and coming out of college. What is this experience like for you? Not working with us, but just everything that you have going on right now. Like if I would imagine it's getting close to April, graduation's in early May, like you're probably getting ready for graduation while this is going on. Like what's going on in your mind? Yeah, so I mean, first off, I love it. Like I love staying busy. I love like, you know, keeping the energy up and not just, you know, sitting down all day. (laughs) Um, But so it's, what is it, March 26th as we're recording this? Um, I graduate May 12th, which is crazy. So it's a little over a month away. But, you know, time is flying. This whole, my senior year in general has flew by. Like, I felt like I just 
I got back from the summer like last week. <laughs> um, but so we, I've got a little over a month left. And as I'm actually looking at my calendar right now, because I was looking at dates and it is pretty packed, <laughs> um, but I'm excited for it. Um, I'm like, as the weeks go by, they feel like they're two days long. <laughs> so I'll go, I'll go Monday, Monday to Friday, pretty much take it day by day, obviously. But my, I, what I did starting off the semester was get into a groove. So I'll, I've made my school schedule. Um, and then I obviously I'm working here for CAS source, uh, whenever I have time. Right. Um, and so I spend a lot of time in the library as we've talked about before, like I'll go to class and then I'll either hop on the phone with someone, either whether it's you, whether it's with a potential client, whether it's with a current client. Um, and then I'll go knock out schoolwork and homework or schoolwork and work work at the library um, for a couple hours. And then I'll usually go to another class. But one thing I really like to do, and this is what I tell a lot of people when I, when we talk about working in school, because a lot of you know, a lot of a lot of college students do work at school, whether it's working at Walmart, whether it's working at a golf course whether it's working at a hospital, right? You're still working in school and you're still busy, right? Some people aren't doing that, but there are more people than you, or at least the people I talk to, they do that. So one thing I talk about is staying productive and doing things that will help you with school and work. And the thing for me with that is going to the gym. So every day, I try to work out every day, um, sometimes not on the weekend. So it's typically about five days a week, but I try to take at least an hour a day to go to the gym. And it's, again, it's one of my passions. People, some people, you know, they don't like going to the gym, so they do some other thing, whether it's painting or whether it's writing, right? But I enjoy going to the gym, and that helps me with school, and that helps me with work. Because one thing, you know, we're big on is fitness in the workplace, right? And I would, I'm in the workplace as well as the school place, right? So uh, if I'm spending three hours in the library, I'm sitting down for three hours and not doing anything productive, then I'll, I'll run home, right, grab a bite, and then go to the gym. And that makes a huge difference. So actually, like, once I'm done at the gym for, say, an hour, an hour and a half, depending on what I'm doing, it, it actually makes me want to do more after. And I typically go at night um, after I'm done with the days, everything I had to do for the day. And staying productive while you're working is huge because again it sparks creativity like we were talking about snapchat before so sometimes i'll be whether i'm lifting a weight or running i'll just think of some idea and i'll be like wow we should totally talk about that right or we should do this for this client and i'll write i'll write it down in my notes or i'll just sometimes honestly sometimes i forget about it because that's just how you know my mind just moves right um but so i think my my journey in general is it's it's a learning one, right? So I'm learning every day. I'm learning from you guys. I'm learning from my professors. I'm learning from myself too about time management, about staying productive, about creating new ideas, and just about like kind of who I am as a person, right? So like I've I've learned a lot of things as I started. So I did the internship with you guys with Cast Source in um, started in May, and then obviously. I've been doing it while I was at school. So I've, I haven't been this busy my first three years, which honestly, I'm like, why wasn't I? Right. So, um, like I wasn't taking advantage of what I could have been, which is what a lot of college students are doing nowadays. Like, you know, when you graduate and a lot of people struggle to find jobs, although the, the job market apparently isn't as bad as it has been. Um, but they're still struggling to find jobs or, or jobs, at least in their field. So that's what I wanted to avoid. So that's why, again, you all know the story, right? I approached Eric on Twitter, and that's where I was trying to find, you know, something to do, and I was trying to not be one of those numbers, right? So a lot of – one thing I do like about the professors here at Western Carolina is they talk about post-graduation a lot. Again, I've never been to another college, so I don't know if they do or not, but they talk about the numbers, right? How many people don't find jobs? How many people find – you know, underqualified jobs or anything that they just don't want to be doing. And so I wanted to find something I wanted to do. So I figured I have to start while I'm in school. And that's what I did. And I wouldn't, you know, even though time's flying right now, and I'm sure it'll be, you know, graduation day next week. right? Um, but so, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it back for anything. It's very busy. But again, if you manage your time wisely, you stay productive, and you, you take some time out of every day, right, to do something that you love so you don't go crazy, and you're like, you keep your mental health up and all that, then you can definitely stay productive and just 
keep it up and it'll definitely help you out in the long run from what I have witnessed and from my perspective. Yeah, and I think the, the part that I really like what you said is you said, why wasn't I doing this before? Why wasn't I this productive right. before? And so many people can fall into that trap and say, I should have done this. I missed out. I, I, I'm, it's too late. Well, it's not too late. And, you know, I look right. at that a lot of times, like the way, the amount of reading I do, the amount of uh, information I consume now. When I was maybe younger, I wasn't reading as much. I wasn't doing these things. And it's not a regret. It's a, it's the exactly. learning experience to say, now I'm going to do it. Now I'm going to read as much as I can read. And I'll tell my kids to do it. And they'll be like, you're crazy. And I'm like, well, that's just what goes around, comes around, right? But it's it truly is like you said, I'm going to take advantage of this now. I have this opportunity. I'm going to get on Twitter. I'm going to do whatever I used. It ended up working out. And then you're going to go make the most of it. And it is a lot. It's because it is hard. It's hard to get a job because you graduate in May and you might start looking for a job right before that. Well, it takes a while. And then what if you get the job and you don't like the job? No different. Like what if you got the internship with us and didn't like the internship and then didn't like the opportunity that the, that internship provided as a job after school, right? So you, it's... It's a process that starts well before you ever leave. It's like setting your next shot up. It's like golf. Like, don't just hit the ball aimlessly. Like, where are you trying to go? It might not work out, but at least you tried to put it where you should have gone to set up your next shot. And that's what you've done. You set up your next shot. You graduate college. You come in here. You're full time. And and you're, you're looking at it from a thing of you haven't been in another college. You don't know how they do it somewhere else. What you know is what you know and the experience yep. that you've gone through. And you can help others do it. But more than anything else, you can help yourself with it too. So I think it's a it's pretty incredible perspective to have that uh, where you are as you continue to learn about yourself and doing all these things. And time management's important, right? We all know it. Productivity is is huge. That's why audio is so big because you can you can work out and listen to a podcast. So you can consume information while staying fit. You can take a walk back to your place or back to, or in a, wherever you go out to eat. Listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook, talk on the phone. John, you've been calling clients and pr prospects and not se not trying to sell them something to have conversations and build relationships with people. And that's all yeah. you've done with us is you've built a relationship with our group here at CASSource. You've you've helped the culture, the culture has helped you and it's worked out. So, it's amazing that what you can do uh, as you record this, you're you're in you're in school. Like you have class, I think it starts in 20 minutes. Like we got to get this thing yeah. over with so you can get to class, but yeah, I think it's pretty awesome to have it from that way as opposed to, you know, make believing like you have it all figured out when really, who really does? So. No, yeah, I agree. And I'm not, I don't have it all figured out, right? Like I'm, I'm playing it as we go, right? So like, that's what I've been doing all along. I love, you know, I love the culture and everything. I love staying active. And so one, like, again, we're going to wrap this up because I had class in 20 minutes, but, um, but talking to clients every day as you know, so one thing I realized uh, talking about productivity is my I park and any college student kid can back me up on this. Right. So I park. Right. And I, got, I have like a 30 minute walk to class. <laughs> um, and I was like, there's got to be a way I can be productive in these 30 minutes because that's, you know, there and back. It's wasting an hour of my day. Right. Um, but so what I've been doing is calling clients, calling potential clients, calling, you know, Eric, calling anyone like really. I'll even call my parents. Right. Um but it's just staying productive and then building up those relationships to where kind of like I, right, so I'm setting myself up for after graduation. I'm also doing the same thing with clients and potential clients. So I'm building up these relationships for, you know, when I'm there in May, they're like, I'm like, I can, I'm transparent with them. They know I'm in college, right? We're not hiding the fact that I'm in college, right? And it's crazy. So like one thing, my initial thoughts when I first started doing this internship is nobody will want to talk to me because I'm young, because I'm in college, because that was my main um, ob object that I had to overcome because in my mind, I was like, nobody's going to want to talk to me, right? They're, this kid doesn't know what he's doing, right? Like he's young, <laughs> he doesn't know. And, but really that's, that's not true, right? If you, if you talk to them and you just, you talk to them person to person, they'll want to talk to you, right? And, and I think, that's a good thing. And it's setting you up. It's setting you up for when I go back to Charlotte this summer and then I can meet with them and I can talk to them. And we already have this relationship that's previously previously built out. Yep. And yeah, yeah it's yep. not it's not it gives you time, right? You're not set up to close the deal necessarily. You can. Right. right? You can yeah. <laughs> you can get the deal this second. 
but you can also build it out for the future, which I think is something that we want to talk about on more. We've talked about already, talk about future podcasts of, of more the, the long-term approach to things of, yeah. you know, keeping them in the game, giving people good content, good information, good ideas, helping them out. Right, John, I say it all the time. Like, how can we help build and protect the business owners that we talk to on a daily basis? That's it. Whether they pay us for it right. or not, how can we help them out? If we do those things, it's going to work out. It's going to help their business. They're going to be better off for it. The people that they impact are going to be better off for it. And ultimately, we get to be better off for that as well. And, and that's what you're doing, right? You're not, you're playing this thing for the long game. This is a, this is a long journey that you're on that we're all on and, you know, just we work hard at it. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's why I wanted you to be able to tell that story, which you've told in other aspects. Um, but I think to like, just hear about, you know, what it is that keeps you going, the, the working out, the walking, the trying to find that hour, the 30 minutes in your day to be more productive. It's pretty awesome. So Keep that going. We'll all keep it going. And I think that's, uh, we can finish it with that topic. John, it was absolutely awesome having this freestyle discussion with you. The hot topic of Facebook privacy issues, the social media app Snapchat, and the nonstop days of a working college student are all topics entrepreneurs need to think through at some level. The perspectives from this episode are now perspectives you as a business owner and entrepreneur can use for yourself. And for you to listen to the entire podcast, thank you. And for any entrepreneur with questions on Facebook, Snapchat, internships, or anything content marketing related, feel free to reach out to us. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me directly. You can contact me on Twitter at Eric underscore Kez or with the same name on Instagram. Or you can find us at KezSource.com with links to us on the different social networks. Thank you for listening to our KezSource podcast, Entrepreneur Perspectives, building and protecting your business one podcast at a time. Until next time, we're out of here. This podcast exists in large part because of CASCM, the content marketing business inside CASSource, Inc. CASCM is excited to bring the content marketing services used at CASSource to you. Learn more by visiting CASCM.com. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. It's a big deal to us. We hope you found value in it. And if you did, we would be incredibly grateful if you gave us a review on iTunes. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and feel free to share it with anyone you know. More than anything, thank you again for listening. We appreciate it.